Hello, sixth grade. Lesson 4.5 is all about graphing ratio tables. Now that we know how to make a ratio table, how can we actually put it on a coordinate grid? Before we do that, let's take just a quick amount of notes. Up on the top, it says ratio tables represent equivalent values. Remember that in the table, the relationship stays the same. Right? We might have more of something, we might have less of something, but the relationship always stays the same. The next sentence says, we graph equivalent ratios by using numbers from the ratio table to create ordered pairs. All right, so something is in order, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, but with ordered pairs, they look like this, x, comma, y in parentheses. Please make sure that you get that on your paper as well. You probably remember that from fifth grade, right? If you don't, it's really quick and easy to do, right? And we got this. Okay, let's jump right into today's problem. It says, Anna earns $4 for each hour she babysits. She doesn't make a whole lot of money there. Anna earns $4 for each hour that she babysits. The next sentence says, fill in the table below. This table, we're going to fill it in, right? For, to show the equal rates for the number of hours she babysits. And then we're going to graph the ordered pairs. Okay. When I go back to this sentence and it says, Anna earns $4 for each hour she babysits, I see that this word here does not have an S, which tells me each time she works for one hour, she gets $4, right? So if I'm going to fill in this table down here, the easiest one is the top line. I see here, it says hours. Here's one hour. If she works exactly one hour, then she should make in dollars exactly $4. Our ordered pair just puts them in order. One comma four. And I know the one goes first because did you notice underneath hours, it says X right there. That's our X value. And underneath dollars earned, it says Y. So that's our Y value. Okay, cool. Not so bad. She could work more hours. Right? So if we keep on going and we see now in the next row, it says two hours. Well, what that really means is she gets $4 for the first hour. Grabs a different color here. Grab green. She gets $4 for the first hour and $4 for the next hour, which means she has a total of $8. Right? So what is our ordered pair going to be? Two hours, $8. Right? Let's try the next one. Going down, now she's working three hours. Each hour she makes $4. So we'd have hour one, hour two, hour three, and that equals 12. So the ordered pair here is three comma 12, right? At this point, you can see that it's repeating fours. This number in front, this X value, tells you how many fours. I'm going to start to run out of room for fours. I can try and write really teeny, teeny, tiny here. Here we go. Four plus four plus, there's the third hour plus the fourth hour. Oh, I made it. Equals 16. So that gets me four comma 16. But there is no way I'm going to be able to make it work in the next row. So I can start to see now that I have repeat addition, right? So we really have a times four pattern. Do you see that I'm writing four over and over and over, right? We're writing the number four multiple times. So to find the Y on the top line, one times four is four, two times four is eight, three times four, see the four three times is 12, right? Four times four, see four fours, that's 16. So for this next one, it's still times four, this time, I'm just going to write it. It's 20. So for our last pair, 5 comma 20. Cool. This is great. The next thing I need to do is put those ordered pairs onto the graph here on the side. I can see that there are some letters hanging out here. I'm going to start on this side with the X. The X goes along with this line, and the X also goes along with hours. See how it says hours X? So I'm going to write the word hours on this blue line underneath the X line. Here we go, hours. So this nine right there means nine hours. This three right here means three hours. This entire line going up above the five means five hours. Okay, so that probably tells us what's going to go on the up and down axis, but do you see that there is a Y hanging out up here? There's a letter Y. That goes along with this Y here. Dollars earned. All right, so I'm gonna turn my iPad. You can't really tell that I'm turning it, but I'm gonna turn my iPad and try to write this the best I can. Dollars earned. Dollars 
earned. You should turn your paper. That means the numbers on this up and down or vertical line go along with dollars. So this three line going all the way across, everything here means three dollars. Okay? So this nine line here, everything on that kind of orangey line means nine dollars. All right, here we go. We are going to plot these ordered pairs. Let's look at the very first one. The very first one says one comma four. So I see that the one is under the X. So I'm going to find one on the X. Remember the X is the, is the across line here. There's the X. So I'm gonna find the one. I'm gonna trace up, up the one, great. And I also see that the Y is four. So I'm gonna find on the Y, the up and down four, and I'm gonna go across. And exactly where these two lines cross, that's where I need to put my first dot. This is one hour, four dollars. All right, let's try the next one. For the next ordered pair, down beneath that, it said two comma eight. So two was the X. So find that. Two, go all the way up. And then the Y was eight. So we'll find that on the up and down line, remember? The Y is the up and down line there. Find eight and go across. And where those two lines connect, dot. Great. Next one is three comma 12. Right. So let's grab, we'll grab blue for that one. Three comma 12. Three is the X. That's the across line, that's the hours. Three, and then the Y, zoom in. The Y over here was 12. So we'll go on the up and down axis, get to 12. And where those connect, we'll put another dot. All right, then I think we have a problem. I can see that up at the very top of this Y, there is a 14, do you see that? But if you look at the next ordered pair, do you see that the Y is, that the Y is 16? See that, All right? That means that I can't put any more dots on the graph. It doesn't mean that she can't work four hours. It just means that the graph isn't big enough to show it. Okay, so to show that she can work more than four hours, I need to put a line on this graph. Here's the number one mistake I see kids make. They connect the first dot, connect the first dot, come on, here we go, through the last dot and stop. Let's try that again. They connect the first dot to the last dot and stop. This shows that she can work between one and four hours, but we know that she can work more than that. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to make this line extend all the way through the graph. So I'm gonna go back to this top line, this top dot, and go all the way down, back to this top dot, and go all the way down to zero, zero. Because if she works zero hours, she should get zero dollars. Do you notice that this makes a straight line? If your dots make a straight line, that means that you graphed ratio problems correctly. All right, one more thing. We need to answer the question at the bottom. How much would Anna, how much would she earn if she worked 3.5 hours? Remember, 3.5 is 3 and 5 tenths, which is the same as 3 and a half. If I look in this table, right, our hours are at the beginning, right, it does not say 3.5. So I'm going to go to the graph and find 3.5. All right, 3.5 means 3 and a half. So I will make a line starting at 3 and a half. So that's halfway between 3 and 4. And make it go straight up. Oh. Looks to me like that is gonna connect straight across to 14. So using this graph, I can see that if she worked three and a half hours, she would make $14. Okay, this is your notes. You have a few graphs to work on on your worksheet. You really need to use a ruler. Please make sure you use a ruler. Please make sure you return my ruler. Good luck.